stem from taped remarks of Biden during an April campaign appearance in New Hampshire. We already have a nigger mayor. We don't need any more nigger big shots. The law school on a full academic scholarship, the only one in my, in my class uh, to have a full academic scholarship, went back to law school and, in fact, ended up in the top half of my class. I was the outstanding student in the political science department at the end of my year. I graduated with three degrees from undergraduate school and 165 credits, only 123 credits. Biden now concedes he did not graduate in the top half of his law school class, that he does not have three degrees from college, and that he was not named outstanding political science student in college. Newsweek says Biden actually went to school on a half scholarship, ended up near the bottom of his class, and won only one degree, not three. Joe Biden ranked 76th in a class of 85 at the University of Syracuse Law School. I mean, this guy comes off this whole thing as a flyweight. Now Biden says Newsweek is right. His memory had failed him. And I'd be delighted to sit down and compare my IQ to yours if you'd like, Frank. Joe Biden was victimized by the truth. Bye-bye, Biden. He may not know it yet, but I think this is very diff going to be very difficult for him to recover. It. Is Joe Biden dead meat, yes or no? I think so. Bob? He's in terminal condition. Terminal. Eleanor? Yes, unless he comes in third in Iowa. <laughs> Morton? Dying. I say dead. We're Democratic presidential candidate Joseph Biden today faces a controversy. Three weeks ago at a debate at the Iowa State Fair, he used phrases identical to those delivered by British Labor Party leader Neil Kinnock. Biden seemed to be claiming Kinnock's vision and life as his own. Why is it that my wife is sitting out there in the audience is the first in her family to ever go to college? Why is Gladys the first woman in her family in a thousand generations? To be able to get the university. My ancestors who worked in the coal mines in northeast Pennsylvania and come up after 12 hours and play football. Eight hours underground and then come up and play football. It's because they didn't have a platform upon which to stand. There was no platform upon which they could stand. The notion that every thought or notion or idea you'd have to go back and find and attribute to someone, I think is quite frankly, uh, ludicrous. The problem here is that Senator Biden told his audience he'd just been thinking about these things, and he failed to give any credit at all to his famous British speechwriter. You know, I was thinking on the way over here. <laughs> now, that's a little too much, because as you point out, what's behind the words? What's there? And a lot of people, the rap on Biden has always been that it's just a surface. I should have said, to paraphrase Neil Kinnock, it's the only time I didn't in all the times I've ever used it. But CBS News found a tape of a second instance. It reappeared in the New York Times with a new charge, that Biden had appropriated a famous litany from the late Robert Kennedy about what the gross national product cannot measure. It cannot measure the health of our children. The health of our children. The quality of our education. The quality of their education. The joy of their play. Or the joy of their play. Biden gave Kennedy no credit. He has also quoted or paraphrased John Kennedy, Hubert Humphrey, and British Labor Party leader Neil Kinnock, all without credit. Joseph Biden admitted today that he committed plagiarism when he was in law school. He said it was a mistake, but that it was unintentional. He quoted five pages of someone else's work without proper citation. I've done some dumb things, and I'll do dumb things again. He was given an F. So ladies and gentlemen, I've been dumb. To the political community in Washington, it all seems of a piece. Plagiarism at law school, plagiarism on the stump. The great communicator. Strike that. The great imitator. You don't steal verbatim, uh, or when you do, as he did 99% of the time, you give credit. Biden's critics say he sells himself as a man whose words and visions can inspire a new generation in politics. But if the thoughts, phrases, and visions really belong to others, it's a form of false advertising. Is it a wise idea, though, to take something that personal anyway from another politician and try and appropriate it to your own campaign? I think it was a stupid thing to uh, appropriate uh, material that was really very personal that was someone else's. Most people didn't know who he was, you know, Joe Biden, Biden, and now they're going to say, oh, yeah, he's the guy who plagiarized. That's a lot of people. First. Politically, that's <laughs> devastating. These clips are devastating. He looks like a Joe Biden wind-up doll with somebody else's words coming out. If they're going to do things that are stupid as well as immoral, then they're probably too dumb to have the job of president. The voters are going to have to decide whether he was dishonest or dumb. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. And the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down 
So it was trained, and then watch the hair come back up again. They look at it. So I learned about roaches. I learned about kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. We have this notion that somehow if you're poor, you cannot do it. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I probably best on Twitter. I was not out marching. You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. It's a point. I'm not joking. And to get hot, I got a lot of, I got hairy legs that turn, that, 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 that turn uh, um, blonde in the sun. And the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down so it was straight and then watch the hair come back up again. They look at it. So I learned about roaches. I learned about kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. They're going to put you all back in chains. 30 seconds or less. What kind of a chance would a northeastern liberal like Joe Biden stand uh, in the South if you were running in Democratic primaries against Southerners like Mark Warner and uh, John Edwards? Better than anybody else. And you don't know my state. My state was a slave state. My, my son is attorney general a year in Iraq came back and that's one of the things that he finds is was most in need when he was over there in Iraq for a year people would come to him and talk about what was happening at home in terms of foreclosures in terms of bad loans that were being I mean these Shylocks who took advantage of uh, of these women and men I had spent years writing what became known as the Biden crime bill the Biden crime bill the Biden crime bill Democrats right now especially African Americans have really looked back on the 1994 crime bill um, not very fondly. Hillary Clinton herself has come out against it, even though her husband signed it into law. Well, the author of that crime bill was Joe Biden. The Biden crime bill. The Biden crime bill. Biden's 1994 crime bill, while implementing sweeping gun control, also helped fuel mass incarceration with financial incentives to keep people behind bars. The Biden crime bill. The Biden crime bill. The Biden crime bill is before us. Calls for the death penalty for 40. 51 offenses. A wag in the newspaper recently wrote that something to the effect that Biden has made it a death penalty offense for everything but jaywalking. Biden crime bill. Biden crime bill. I like the idea they keep in jail longer. I'm the guy that wrote the bill requiring federal judges to keep people in jail 100% of the time for which they're sentenced, and the notable exceptions, only 85%. So I'm all for tougher enforcement. If Haiti just quietly sunk into the Caribbean or rose up 300 feet, it wouldn't matter a whole but lot. Is it because blacks are involved in Haiti? It was old media that got him in trouble. Personal comments he made about another White House hopeful, Senator Barack Obama. I mean, you got the first sort of mainstream African American yeah. who is articulate and bright and, and, and clean and nice looking guy. I mean, it's, that's a storybook, man. Yeah. The Senate. One chapter receiving fresh scrutiny comes from his earliest years in the Senate when he strongly opposed mandatory school busing was designed to achieve integration and a more equitable education. What's less known is how he followed the lead of some of the Senate's most fervent segregationists. In a series of never-before-published letters reviewed by CNN, the strength of Biden's opposition to busing comes into sharper focus. On March 25, 1977, Biden wrote, My bill strikes at the heart of the injustice of court-ordered busing. It prohibits the federal courts from disrupting our educational system. Biden sought and received support from Mississippi Senator James Eastland, the Democratic chairman of the Judiciary Committee and a leading symbol of Southern resistance to desegregation. He frequently spoke of blacks as, quote, an inferior race. Eastland and others were partners on several of Biden's anti-busing bills. On June 30th, 1977, Biden wrote, Dear Mr. Chairman, I want you to know that I very much appreciate your help during this week's committee meeting in attempting to bring my anti-busing legislation to a vote. Then in 1978, Biden again asked Eastland to put his anti-busing bill before the full Senate, writing, your participation in floor debate would be welcome. Well, the fact that he was 
solicit the support of a staunch uh, segregationists, uh, James Eastland, as well as Jesse Helms, uh, introducing legislation as op opposing busing at that time. Now to the race for 2020 this morning and new backlash against former Vice President Joe Biden. He's refusing to p apologize as he faces growing criticism over comments he made about being able to work with others in Washington. But his examples were segregationist senators 40 years ago. Corey apologize for what? I was actually very, it was hurtful to hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. And it was not only that, but you also worked with them to oppose busing. And, you know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. To coddle the reputations of segregationists, of people who, if they had their way, I would literally not be standing here as a member of the United States Senate, is, I think, um, it's just, it's misinformed and it's wrong. 2020 rival Senator Cory Booker demanding an apology. Uh, that somebody running for president of the United States, somebody running to be the leader of our party, should know that using the word boy in the way he did uh, can cause hurt and pain. Vice President Biden shouldn't need this lesson. The end result is they're about to knock my mother on the head with a lead pipe, shoot my sister, beat up my wife, take on my sons. So I don't want to ask what made them do this. They must be taken off the street. Increase the penalties. Increase them. I would put the son of a gun in jail. Put them to death. From the crack epidemic of the 80s to the crime wave of the 90s to the post 9-11 war on terror, throughout his career, Biden has represented the Democratic Party consensus, shifting his views to fit whatever best serves his own political career. Over his 44 years in the Senate and then as vice president, Biden was a leading architect of today's criminal justice system, which contributed to mass incarceration and the police misconduct that protesters are fighting back against today. When I wrote the original bill that started this whole process, the so-called Biden crime bill, I didn't call a liberal calm fab and write it. I didn't call any big society people and write it. I called the cops. A Democratic president wants 100,000 cops. A Democratic president wants to build 125,000 new prison cells. That's the secret. That somehow the Republicans tried to make the crime bill tougher. I say, poppycock, they didn't make anything tougher. Found out that this midnight basketball isn't getting them together a bunch of jive folks living in their city to do, uh, you know, try to see if they can be Michael Jordan. When they found out they were keeping schools open so gangs come off streets instead of out raping my mother, marauding me, robbing the local store. They're in a gymnasium. And my daughter will be safer, my wife will be safer, my mother will be safer, and I will be safer. And I will be happy. The 1994 crime bill drove up the local, state, and federal prison populations. And it tarnished the reputations of Biden and Bill Clinton, who signed it into law. Hey! The mass incarceration created by Biden's lock em up policies ripped apart vulnerable communities and families for a generation, and the federal funding streams and law enforcement infrastructure it created continue to hinder reform efforts. I'll do my job and I will take responsibility.